Genk is a small provincial town in northern Belgium, situated close to the borders with Holland and Germany, and within easy distance of France and the United Kingdom. Well, it's marvellous to be here on a very sunny, bright, blue-skied morning in Genk, in Belgium, at Zlatberg Airfield. It's a model club, privately owned, with all its own facilities. And one of the leading figures in this club is Eric Ritsum, who invited us here for this weekend and a lot of other foreign ducted fan flyers, and has thoughtfully laid on such marvellous weather. Eric, could you tell us a little bit about the club and how you came to organise this event? Well, our club exists uh, almost 40 years now, and we never had a ducted fan meeting until now. I was in Abingdon a few times in France and in Germany, and you always hear the same problem. The British never meet the German, and the German never meet the British. Okay, so I thought, why don't do of make an event in Belgium, where and British and French and Dutch and Belgium, even Danish and German pilots meet each other. So you can exchange some information about ducted fan. And I think for the first edition, it's pretty well. We exchanged a lot more than ducted fans last night, I think. <laughs> didn't we? Uh, that's a and, meaning and to you. Yeah. Suffering a little bit this morning as a result. Well, I think. A long weekend is, is, is very good, but you have to relax in the evening and, of course, help a club. Yeah, well, you've been very hospitable. We've enjoyed ourselves very much so far. Thank you. There's a lot of flying left to do. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. or a German Modelers uh, Flying Association, a little bit like the British SMAE. And both of uh, our guests have official positions and they've been very much involved in the development of the ducted fan movement here. Could you perhaps, Winfried, I think you're the on the presiding board, <laughs> tell us a little bit about the organization, the Obergruppenführer, yeah. is that right? In the uh, German Model Flyers Association, we have uh, 25,000 members, only RC flyers, and we are uh, probably not member of the FIE, but we uh, uh, grounded this association uh, about disappointment with uh, the FIE and other official things, and uh, now we are uh, proved to, uh, uh, to sponsor a special uh, model class like ducted fans, pylon racers, air towing gliders, and so on. And Heinrich is responsible for that particular activity, isn't he? Yes, I'm let's Could say. Could you tell us about uh, the sort of plans you have for the future in terms yes, of ducted yes. fan meeting? I'm uh, in the, let's say, advisory board of this uh, Model Fliegerverband in Germany, and uh, I'm uh, responsible for the ducted fans in this organization. That means we are looking for the technique, what is built in the models. We are looking whether they are scale or not. Uh, uh, then we have uh, three flights with different kinds of combat figures. And these are also pointed. And at the end we have a winner of such a competition. That is very different to the ducted fan meetings where you can make your own experience where you can fly what you want but I think it is uh, a real alternative to this. It's very much like the Bob Violet competition I think in the Tangerine yes. uh, Championships in Florida held each year yes. so very similar and uh, yes very much to be encouraged because it will develop ducted fans I yes. think to their yes. full capabilities. Yes. Wolfgang Rotzek Sabre is a masterpiece of engineering with its special nose gear that rotates through 90 degrees on retraction its all-flying tail, which also features an operating elevator, operating flaps, and dive brakes, and a most impressive system for the deployment of leading edge slats.
The Sabre is modelled in the style of an aircraft in the famous Richthofen Squadron. It is typical of the Canadair Mark V Sabres flown by the Luftwaffe during the late 1950s. The model uses a Rossi 90 engine in a bar fan. Its maiden flight came to grief later in the day. It was quite obviously unstable immediately after takeoff, due, it is believed, to a rearward centre of gravity. Fortunately, the damage was not too severe and will be quickly repaired. This points to a problem with many swept-wing jets in that the centre of gravity must be placed well forward of the 25% mean aerodynamic core that is usually regarded as totally safe for conventional straight-wing aircraft. At the other end of the complexity range to the F-86 Sabre is the Blue Hornet by Herr Kluhr. It is a character scale kit of the McDonald F-18 Hornet manufactured by Bob Parkinson Models in the United States. This version uses a Pico 80 engine in a Gleichhauf fan. Heinrich Voss built this British Aerospace Hawk from a Leicester Models kit originally designed for propeller power rather than for a ducted fan. It uses a rather heavy glass fibre fuselage, yet the Bauer fan and Rossi 90 engine provide plenty of power to pull it through vertical manoeuvres. You will notice that the RPM is somewhat lower than most ducted fan models are used to. Also, the noise level is quite modest. This is due to the power-absorbing characteristics of the Bauer fan. Heinrich was the design engineer for this fan unit and will tell us something about his philosophy later on. I'm very pleased to be able to uh, speak to you, Mr. Voss, Heinrich, yeah. if I can call you that. You're one of the very famous names in uh, German ducted fan mm. technology, and I'm aware that you've been very much involved from the earliest days of ducted fans, yes. and I've also been pleased to read something about your Alpha jet, which we've seen flying today and flying yes. very well. First of all, could you tell us something about this plane? Uh, it has a longer history. I designed this so-called Bauer fan, which is now uh, sold by Mr. Gleichauf in Germany. And when I did this research, personal research work on this fan, I made a uh, model just as a uh, test stand. That means I began with nearly such a shape of a model, what is near, what was near to the Alpha jet, and then I examined this a new designed fan. And after this period, uh, this fan was sold to the company Bauer, and then I made this Alpha Jet more as a scale model. You can see that this, uh, the shape of the wings and uh, the trail, trails, the tailplane and tail, 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 tail areas, 
are really as uh, scale, yeah. but mm -hmm. the ducted fan inlets are a little bit enlarged. Is there a cheat, an additional in inlet no, underneath it? there is it? no cheat Could you hole. pick it up if I just yes. hold this moment and show the underside? I see, yes. So there's no cheat inlet at all and you don't rely upon anything other than the scale inlet or the larger than scale inlet. What about the, the tailpipe? Is that enlarged as well? Yes. I have no, no double nozzles. I have one... Uh, I see, yes. Nozzles and also some holes in the fuselage yeah. at the end. How much does the plane weigh and roughly what is its uh, length and span? Uh, the middle, the, the model weighs about 5.4 kilograms and the length is about 1.8 meters and the span is 1.4 meters. Do you know what sort of thrust you would be getting with uh, this? The thrust is between uh, 4 and 4.5 uh, kilograms. The, the design of this fan is really suited to a, a sport type engine, isn't it? A lower revving engine. Yes, uh, when I made this uh, work I looked for more normal engines. That means that uh, these motors are not able to run in the 20,000 yeah. RPM area. And therefore I designed this fan for more energy conversion at lower speeds. That means I have a high stagger angle in my blades and uh, normally the engines, let's say uh, 80s engines, are running at about 16,000 RPM. That's very nice. The noise is certainly held down. Yes. But you need a large fan and therefore larger intakes, is that yes, it? Large yes. diameter. What diameter yes. is that fan? Uh, the fan has a diameter of 140 millimeters. And I think uh, we are now in a period that we are developing our inlet ducts. That means yes. we could uh, take smaller areas, but we have to make very smooth channels and very... A little bit uh, like the Bob Violet approach yes, to the Viagent. Yes, yes. yes, that means you... You, you have a small inlet area and after this area you need a diffuser. That means you yeah. have to increase your area coming to the fan. Okay. And I think it would, would be a fine solution and I'm working on, on, on this problem. I want to change my Alpha Jet to more scale inlets. Are you able to use any help from the company that you work for in the design, the computer no. design of uh, no. fans and inlets? No. You're not able no, to? No, no, no. Uh, and you wouldn't I'd tell me if you did? <laughs> <laughs> I have a lot of experience and I can use this experience, it is yes. clear, but I cannot do work. In well, I know company. that you are a professional engineer and you work yes. for a gas turbine yes. company, so yes. you must have a lot of experience. Yes. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure talking to you and it's good to see it fly. Goodbye. Thank you. This extremely attractive Alpha jet by Hermann Hendricks of West Germany is built to his own design at a slightly smaller scale than Heinrich Voss's Alpha jet we have just seen. It weighs 4.8 kilograms and uses a Bauer 40 fan with a Pico 65 engine. The colour scheme commemorates the 25th anniversary of the airfield at Oldenburg. This de Havilland Vampire T55 trainer by Uwe Fleischer really took my fancy. The Vampire is a difficult scale subject for ducted fans as it has such a short fuselage that a normal tuned pipe would stick out of the rear duct and ruin its scale appearance. Uwe has overcome this problem by using a pusher fan with the pipe in front of the fan, but even here he has had to modify the Merca 604 pipe so that it exhausts under the fuselage, as can be seen in the takeoff sequence. The fan is a Bauer 60, powered by a Rossi 81. The plane spans 1.3 meters, weighs 3.9 kilograms, and thrust is 3.5 kilograms, which gives it a very lively performance. The aircraft handles well on the ground and is smooth in the air. It seemed to be a very reliable design and logged several flights during the weekend.
The Lockheed F-104 Starfighter is also a difficult scale subject, but for quite different reasons to the Vampire. The main problem with the Starfighter is the very small wing area. This gives it a high stalling speed and requires a high thrust to weight ratio for realistic performance. The other problem with the F-104 is its exceedingly long nose, which tends to destabilize the aircraft unless the centre of gravity is brought well forward. Rainer Binchik of Cologne has largely overcome these problems, as can be seen in the flying sequence. The F-104 is his own design using a Rossi 90 powered biojet. The model weighs 6.5 kilograms and is one-sixth scale with a length of 2.7 meters. The construction is wood throughout. Unfortunately, he aborts a landing and tries to go around again, but turns the aircraft before he has obtained sufficient height and speed. This presents a situation from which there is no escape, as there is no reserve of power to get him out of trouble. The end is spectacular. but fortunately not disastrous.
We zetten wel met de neus in de winkel om de stop te gaan op. At the opposite extreme of the thrust to weight spectrum to the Starfighter, we have Joe Dweck's Mirage 2000. This was built from a jet hangar hobbies kit by Philippe Avons, who we have just seen starting the model. Joe brought the model from Philip and fitted it with a Rossi 90 driving a Dynamax fan. At five kilograms weight, it should fly fast, especially when you consider that Barry Wolf originally designed the model for a 45 size engine and a Turbax 1 fan unit, which normally give it a more than adequate performance. Joe has another ace up his sleeve when he lands the model. There is no chance of it running into the grass when he applies his wheel brakes. Another canard with very high performance is Herr Hoosen's Café 2. Its flower power colour scheme may not be to everyone's taste, but it certainly turned a few heads. The canard design allows controlled flight well below the stalling speed of most ducted fan models. Unfortunately, I did not get details of this aircraft, but it looks very much like a Byron Originals kit powered by a Rossi Biojet power package. The F-16 Fighting Falcon is probably the most popular full-size prototype for ducted fan modelers. There were five at the Genk Flying, of which this Leicester Models kit built by Ian Preston was the smallest. 
Ian has enjoyed many flights with this robust little model. It is certainly no slouch with its OS46 and Thorjet power plant. The high RPM of this fan contrasts sharply with the lower revving Bauer and Biojet fan units typified by the next F-16, finished in very attractive Thunderbird colours. Could you tell us a little bit about the blue model, the F-16 that you, uh, I think, are famous for in Germany? Yes. We watched it perform yesterday, and unfortunately, that terrible crash. Tell us a little bit about the model, if you would, and then what happened in that final flight. I flew that model for about uh, four years. It's the uh, second version. And when I built the model, I was expecting what uh, cover flake mm -hmm. I use. And then uh, uh, I had the great luck to get a photo from an F-16, which was, uh, we call it in German, baby blue. Ah, yes. And oh, I liked yeah, it so yeah. much, so that yeah. I built that model and take the paint, there, baby there's blue. There's no misunderstanding whose it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, therefore the model is uh, famous around all Germany. Yeah. When I came to a contest, a scale contest or ducted fan contest, everyone said, oh, there comes Winfried with his baby blue F-16. Did it perform well in competition? Yeah. Good, it goes very good, and uh, I uh, used to, to, to visit uh, scale competitions, yes. semi-scale competitions as we call it in Germany, yes. and also ducted fan competitions. Mm -hmm. We started with ducted fan in Germany about uh, 10 years ago. Yes. There were three people, Heinrich Voss, Wolfgang Morzek and me, and everyone laughed when we came with the ducted fan model. Yes. But uh, we oh, no, worked feeling. very hard, <laughs> and now the success was there. Unfortunately, yesterday my model crashed in a very hard crash. Yes. I don't know what the reason was, but uh, shortly after takeoff, the model turned sharp left. Yes. I uh, got uh, aileron right yes. as far as I could. Nothing happens. I got trim right as far as I could, and the model uh, 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 flew. It wasn't reversed though, the servos, because it was a very gentle turn, yeah. wasn't it? Very yeah. gentle, and yeah. then just seemed to fly out of range when yeah. I was looking at it. There's no response at all, I guess. I must check it at home, mm. you know, I've all in the plastic bag, the rest of the model. Just, just remind us a bit, the model is, uh, is it a kit or your own it design? It is a kit, yeah, yeah. it's a kit uh, uh, made by Rolf Gleichauf ah, yes, I know, in yeah. Germany. It's a very fine kit, and the uh, ducted fan is a, a, a Gleichauf fan. Yes which is uh, built from a uh, Bauer, yes. Bauer impeller, yes. which had made Heinrich Voss. Mm -hmm. It was his construction, the construction, and there was a new uh, 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 starter made. Yes. And that was done a, a thing between between Byron and Bauer. Yeah, that I've was seen some pictures, very much in the way yeah. of the Bauer. And the engine was what? Engine was a, a 13 CCM Rossi. Ah, yes, yes. Well, we're very sorry to see that crash. I guess it's irreparable now. No, no. You can repair it? No, no, no. Oh, no. okay. Well, oh, the, the rest of the crash is in a plastic bag, you know. The only problem with the campsite 
is the nearby full-size flying strip, which was in active use throughout the weekend. All model pilots were very well disciplined and kept well away from the area. But there was little Winfried could do when he lost control of his model. Fortunately, no harm was done. The only other model to crash was my faithful old MiG-15. It had served me well for six years, 200 flights, and more than 2,000 miles, so it was fitting that its end should be spectacular. At the bottom of a loop, a wing parted company with the oil-soaked fuselage, taking with it one half of the tailplane. It spiralled into the soft, sandy soil at full throttle, and now lies buried in some corner of a foreign field that is forever England. Well, it's two years since we interviewed Mike Koskeeler about his latest development of the Harrier at that time. Since then, th things have moved on quite a lot. And I remember after the last interview, I had that marvellous crash, didn't you, where you nearly decapitated the cameraman. Nearly got him. And is this the same plane rebuilt, or have you gone on No, basically further than the that? same, same design. The major portion of it is recovered from that, or has been recovered from that crash. We haven't really changed a lot, it's refinement now. What does it weigh now? About six and a half pounds. I see. We're slightly out of little weight with the crash damage, I suppose. That's right. We could build it lighter, build a new model lighter now. There's obviously a lot of glue and a lot of paint there. It's, it's not needed. What other refinements have there been in terms of the actual guidance system and things like that? Anything uh, at all? Yes, speeding up of the control movements. Uh, we've now got three gyros fitted and it's been perfecting those really to make sure yeah. that the gain we're getting is adequate. But it's still the same power system, is it? The it yeah, it is, yeah. OS 77 uh, well, we've right? got, uh, it was the uh, Rossi 80, I think, That's 81 right. before. It's the OS now, which has got a much better throttle response. Yes. We're finding now that when, when it's sitting in the hover, we need to adjust it by 50, 100 RPM, yeah. whereas we couldn't really do that with the Rossi. It wasn't uh, sensitive enough, whereas now it's much better. Yeah. Did you have the engine the other way up at that time as well? Um, we have had. Yeah, I've got a feeling some of the shots have showed yeah, the engine. Yeah. Can you turn that round? Because yeah. now you do have a big problem with engine cooling, don't you? That's right. Um, this system, it's basically a bar, and we use the bar and impeller, yeah. and the state is out of the bar, but we, I cut the shroud off because it's, it's a bit too large. To fit it in this size, yes. so it's got the it's got the impeller and the stators in there, and the mount standard. Um, but unfortunately, it, where it is, there's no air over it, so it gets very very hot. Yes. So we we have to restrict the length of hovers purely for that reason. There's yes. no other reason. Um, we could now, on a, a reasonably calm evening, take the model off vertically, hover it. Uh, as long as we would want to, yeah. as I say, it's restricted by that temperature. I know, it will look very good last night, yeah. but I guess with a lot of people standing around and non-ideal conditions, yeah. it's uh, a little nerve-wracking. Well, a little bit, yeah, not, not so much for me, probably for Nick. Can I just ask Nick about flying it? Can you hold that, maybe, and tell us what it's like compared with... I know you've had a lot of helicopter experience, haven't you? Yeah, initially when I started flying this, it was uh, quite a handful, uh, basically because of the control responses, etc. But the use of gyros has uh, eased the pilot's uh, workload quite considerably. Um, basically, in comparison to a helicopter, ideal conditions with the model in its present state, it handles just like a helicopter in the hover. Uh, this particular one, uh, we have managed to take off vertically, hover, we've gone forward, we can go backwards, we've even started to sidestep a bit now and the landing technique has been perfected on a couple of occasions. 
but basically in a hover it's very similar to a helicopter. The only disadvantage we still have at the moment is we've got a little bit of a yaw problem uh, which we're having to um, increase the power on and it should be the same as a helicopter full stop. And the wind makes that worse does it? The wind does make it worse yes. Um, the funny thing is that all the problems that a full-size Harrier has, this one seems to have as well. Have as well. Yeah. Um, but the flying of it, um, basically from off the ground to the hover, I would say any helicopter pilot could cope with it, no problem at all. Um, the transition, we've still got to sort of find out what's going to happen yet, but uh, I don't think that's going to be a problem at all. Can we just talk about that? Because you have uh, built Harriers to roughly the same scale, which have flown in normal flights, we, haven't they? Yeah, horizontal we've, flight. we've had a couple. Um, Mainly, they were never intended to hover. No. It was purely to check an airframe out, any problems that we might occur. And we yeah. did have problems which we sorted out. Uh, trying a proper nozzle system as the full size yeah. of the four, uh, that worked well. So we've got that put away, ready. Uh, once, we've, once we've perfected this, we want to get to the situation where if we get a problem when we're going through the transition, we know we can actually put the nozzles down and stop. Yes. Uh, at the moment, we're not happy to do that. Um, we're not far away now. How far are you from converting this, say, to a nozzle design? Because the, uh, as this one, everyone can see at yeah, the moment, it's, it's not it's directional it's underneath. No, that's it. right, it's just the one big one. Um, it'd have to be bigger, I think, to, to achieve that, but we're yeah. stuck. If we go bigger, we go heavier. Yeah. So we've got to be very careful because we might be able to build a model with a nice nozzle system. It'll fly, but it just hasn't got enough lift to hold. Well, we get so Jerry Jackman uh, or somebody to yeah. build a gas turbine with yeah. a that's fan right. on the front that's and a it. high bypass ratio. Yeah, and, and we'll be away. away. Then you're in, we you're in business then. Yeah. Well, Reg Smith is one of the small band of Brits that made it over here from, uh, to Genk, that is, from Britain this year. And uh, I think we've had a very good two days, haven't we? You've well, certainly marvelous. been flying a lot. I had a marvellous time. Really and enjoyed every minute. The weather and everything has been superb, and the hospitality yeah. too. Oh, yes. You brought three aircraft over, I think, didn't I you? Did, yes. Can yes. you tell us a little bit about this one? Because this is perhaps the one that uh, people are most impressed with. Yeah, well, this is a, a MiG-25 Foxbat of my own design. And it's a, a twin engine with two OS-46 engines and uh, Turbax uh, rotors. And it weighs about 8.5 8 kilograms, 79 inches long. A bit on the heavy side, but that's good for penetration when the conditions are a bit turbulent. I've seen it fly quite well on one engine too. It, uh... Yes, it's quite controllable on one engine. And uh, if it, in fact, it even glides well. Yes, yeah. 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 it's a very clean design. Can you take the hatches off, just to have a look inside? I can, yeah. You, well, you can't see it from here, but these have got special impellers on, haven't they? Yes, they've got uh, seven-blade Thorjet impellers, which uh, I'm just trying out. And uh, they seem to give a little more thrust than the Turbax ones. What are they turning at, then? What's the uh, RPM? 22,000. Oh, I see, yeah. Mm. yeah. And you've certainly got a very large, perhaps we can turn it around, very large tailpipe area, haven't you? It looks enormous, but that is in fact scale. Yes. You really need to reduce that tailpipe area a little, don't you? Yes, it's, it's, so it, is, it is tapered down inside to about five inch diameter, but the actual uh, hole you see there is about six and a half inches. Yeah.
Well, it's very good to be able to welcome Philippe Avance. You know that I produce a kit for the F-15 now, yeah. and I've actually built this aircraft to um, photograph all construction stages and to make up uh, a substantial uh, manual, construction manual with more than 130 photographs. And that airplane uh, served this purpose. And then uh, two months ago I was faced uh, with the problem uh, putting my grey prototype F-15 back in flying order or just to continue this one and uh, have the finish ready and bring this one in a different color scheme that is more spectacular in the air. And I chose that option, but I also chose to equip the aircraft exactly as it is uh, equipped uh, or as it is um, laid out in the instructions. And I have the very latest K&B engines in it without the pump. It's a very neat installation, isn't it? Very clean. Uh, the K&B engines that you were talking about, are, these are still front induction rear exhaust, are they? They're not the, no. the new rear, exhaust, rear induction engines. No, they aren't. And the, the, the fiberglass work, that all comes in the kit, does it? The inlet duct and the, uh, the cover caps, work, everything. Yes. The, the cover cap is, the, those cover caps are molded individually. Yes. And this one is uh, molded individually. And also the landing gear doors, which are not installed here because I didn't have the time to do everything. But the landing gear doors are also uh, molded separately. You have uh, the detailed uh, nozzles. Then uh, a plastic accessory uh, back with uh, those details uh, on the wing tip and yeah. some on the bottom side. Clear canopy, the decals. They all come in the kit. But it is uh, 350 pounds, uh, the price is 350 so that's pounds. A, that's a complete kit, everything apart from engines and fans? Uh, no, it's in fact, uh, it's not a complete kit because I don't furnish the wood. It's too difficult All for me wood. to select okay, uh, yeah. good wood. Well, I leave it to the modeler to select his own wood. Mm -hmm. wood. But what uh, comes also is the stabilizer uh, linkage mechanism yes. on ball bearings ah, uh, yes. in the rear. Uh, because it's uh, very yeah, You important. must need that, it's a very high load on that stabilizer, yeah, so isn't it? Especially when you do a full deflection roll, then the steps are full yeah. deflection. Because in pitch, you don't have a lot of effort on it. They, they yes. move just very slightly, but in roll, they, they move all the way. So what are the fan units? Just remind us. Uh, these are the standard Turbax 1 fan units, but instead of uh, having the shroud, uh, I use the fiberglass shroud, shroud to save the weight yeah. and also to have a better uh, continuity in airflow. And it also adds in the structural integrity of the airplane. Yes. So and the retrain units are what? Are they modified units? They are modified AMT units. Yes. Uh, that's a German unit, which is uh, somewhat more uh, sturdy as uh, Romer's. Yes. It's a superb unit. And the finish, you say, is it's all glass covered, uh, it's all lightweight glass cloth. Yes. And epoxy? Epoxy, hobby epoxy. Paper. Very nice.
En uh, hij ging neer, hè, jongen. Zo'n rol van achter op achter. to introduce you to Angelo Honnery from Belgium and his colleagues who he will now introduce that have built and together uh, developed this magnificent F-14 Tomcat. Angelo, would you like to introduce okay, you? Okay, thank friends? you. Uh, that is my father here. The, he, has, uh, he, has the, he has the sponsor of the, the whole system. That is the oh, uh, John Verkreuze. Uh, he's um, He's the father of our pilot. That is my brother. He has uh, made the whole construction of uh, the, the, the brother of yes. He yeah. is the engineer, and that is uh, our pilot, Bak Verkruise. He has won uh, several, uh, several. Uh, how do you say competitions? Competitions, competitions in uh, the beginning. Could you tell us a little bit about the plane? It, it's an own design. You've designed uh, the complete construction yourselves. Uh, we have. We have made the whole construction ourselves, but it was from a, an existing plan, from Jet Age. Jet, from oh, Jet Age. Jet Age, like yes, oh, okay. Yes. I was uh, forgotten the name. Mm -hmm. um, we have, in the early beginning, from this model, it is uh, now two or three years old, and we, we made it in white with red stripes on the wings, but then it was, uh, we had, uh, in the, the plane, a system for the wings, to wave the wings. Yes, wave but forward. Yes, yes, to make them swim forward. But we have removed the system because then we were made, we have uh, in the system uh, two, by, uh, two Rossi motors, 81, yes. and it was not powerful enough to make the whole construction work. Yes. We have removed the system and we have uh, we had made the system with Rossi 90 motors, and that uh, we have made uh, a three or four times, four flights, and now we, uh, the system, I think that the system could work, but we wait yes. just until the, the model is perfect in order. It yes. sounded very good. What sort of uh, RPM? You're using the Pyrojet, aren't you? We Pyrojet use the Pyrojet, the yes. yes. What sort of uh, RPM, revolutions per minute, do you get? Uh, 22? Yes, 22. And how much thousand. nitro? What fuel? We uh, we have um, in how much nitro do we have in the five percent? Five percent, yes. Have you measured the thrust? Oh, eleven yeah. kilos. Yes. I see. And the weight of the plane is uh, and your in pounds is it thirty pounds? Thirty-two, 30 pounds. pounds. I yes, see. it's sixteen kilos.
not much common though, but... <laughs> yeah, okay. Right. Hold it there, hold it there. <laughs> This brings us to the finish of a perfect weekend, enjoyed by all the family. We had all gained something from the experience, new knowledge, new friends, and had lost nothing, well, almost nothing. All those who visited Genk are indebted to the local club for their hospitality, and to Eric Ritson for his excellent organisation. They certainly earned their rest. <laughs>